Coach, good afternoon. And I know it never ends, especially in today's world, but uh, how, how do you feel uh, at the end of this recruiting cycle? Well, I, I feel pretty good, Paul. Obviously, you know, we put in a lot of hard work. We uh, signed, you know, 18 high school players, added two more today. And then we added a, about 14 uh, players out of the transfer portal. So we're able to get our team um, – fill in the gaps of where we had roster holes and uh, really create a competitive roster. You know, the exciting part about some of these guys coming from the transfer portal is they're already here right now. Uh, we had six freshman early enrollees. So we've got 20 new players on our team right now, and they're all here getting ready to go through, through spring football, which should get us acclimated a lot quicker. Coach, everybody has uh, an opinion on the portal, on NIL, and we haven't had a chance to talk to you in a while. Uh, let's start with the portal, since you've been spending a lot of time in there, whatever whatever in there means. Uh, how do you feel yeah. about the way it's going, and, and what is the approach? Um, I, I think it's adapt or die. I mean, college football's changed rapidly in the last two years. Uh, you can either complain about it or try to, to utilize it to your advantage. Um, and so it, it is what it is. I think both sides, whether it's players and coaches, both have to be uh, understanding that the grass isn't always greener. You know, sometimes you're going into the transfer portal. you got to realize that sometimes the young men that you're getting out of the transfer portal aren't as good as the players that you have that you just got to coach and develop. Um, and it's also the same thing. Kids on our roster, sometimes they think there's going to be a better opportunity out there. They just got to understand that the, the grass is not always greener. I do think it's a good thing for college football. I think it's a good thing for players to find the right fit. Um, and I think it's just as fans and as administration, we got to kind of judge the lens that we're looking through a little bit differently now that this is the new norm of college football. Everybody has a proposal to change it, even though uh, it took a long time to get to where we are. Uh, if you could tweak anything, what would it be? Um. Honestly, Paul, I don't know. I haven't spent enough time sitting there thinking about it. Uh, I don't necessarily like that everybody on your roster is a free agent at the end of the year. Um, and I think, you know, anytime you have 85 players on your team that were probably the best players on their high school team, there's going to be some growing pains. There's going to be some developmental pains. And if players uh, stick to it, they can develop into great players. I mean, look for us, Tyler Beatty last year um, waited his turn to, to play as a senior didn't transfer, didn't go to the portal. Turns out sets a single season rushing records, having a hell of a, a senior bowl down there this week and is going to be a player that put himself in a position to play at the next level for a long time. And, and that's just a tribute to him uh, in sticking to it and growing where he was planted. In terms of the conventional recruiting, uh, Missouri has, has had good, good recruits. I mean, great recruits over the years. But oh, yeah. you don't always see them – uh, in the top 10, 11, 12 uh, in, in these national rankings. Uh, I know that changed this year. Did you do anything differently, or did was it just a, a confluence of events? No, I, I think we focused, number one, on recruiting our best players in the state where you have uh, built-in advantages. You know, I, I think in the past we maybe didn't do as good a job of keeping the Ezekiel Elliott's and the Kyron Williams and the – Jamison Williams in state. Those guys are players that played here in St. Louis or in uh, Kansas City, uh, and those guys went and played elsewhere. We have to keep the best players home, and we were able to do that with Luther Burden and Isaac Thompson and Armand Membo and, and Max Weiser and Marquise Graciel and Jalen Marshall. You know, these guys are tremendous football players that have an opportunity to come home and play for their state uh, institution. We've got 10 Fortune 500 companies that they can increase their brand value. Uh, now in college football. And, and so I think just selling that that opportunity and doing it here in this home state is, is our built-in advantage. We have to play to that advantage. There's been a lot of noise from your, your colleagues, uh, your other SEC head coaches. Uh, Kiffin had a few comments uh, yesterday. Uh, Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher is responding back to that. I know at some point fairly soon, I think you guys all sit in a room together. What do you think that meeting is going to be like? Uh, when uh, you're all together? It'll be, I mean, I've only sat in one of them before where we're all in there together and it's pretty respectful. Uh, no, nobody really says the same things that they'll say on Twitter or in a interview. Um, so I don't anticipate too much fireworks. I, I think we all understand uh, Coach Kiffin does a tremendous job on social media and stirring things up, but he is the portal king. So, you know. Well, you're, you're not exactly uh, 
a shrinking violet on social media either. I mean, you, you've got your own reputation. I'm not trying to, to take anything away from Lane, but. Uh, yeah, no doubt. That's why I don't throw stones in a glass house. <laughs> what, what, what? I mean, I'm a, <laughs> hey, all I'm going to say, Paul, is the only the only goal I have for today is not to create a national story by saying something stupid on your show. OK, so I'm just I'm trying to stay in on that one. That's fairly disappointing because you you have said that you have said those things before here, uh, as we all remember. Yeah. yeah. And hey, Paul, here, here's what my dad told me. OK, you need to win more games. <laughs> then you can talk. So focus more on winning, and and you know what? He's got a lot of truth to that. So uh, I need to. We, we need to. We need to win more football games. Steve Spurrier won football games, and then he can say whatever he wants. Eli Drink was ain't won enough yet. I hate that because uh, you. Uh, when I saw you, uh, I guess in, in at the at the SEC media days, you were on a roll, and uh, you continued on that roll, and then I don't know what happened. I guess you had to, you know go back to the field and start coaching again. But we, we missed you uh, in, the, in, in the social media world. Well, I, hey, it, you know, look, we got, some, we got some players here in this recruiting class. We got to do a better job coaching. And if we can win, then we'll throw out some shots again. But until then, I probably just got to focus on trying to win. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.